Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Johnson. I'm the owner and operator of a firearms training facility in beautiful Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, I'm glad you're here this evening. Uh, we are live from the range. We do these every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. We would love to tell you guys um, that uh, it's been a beautiful day. Uh, we have uh, the weather is pretty nice. It is uh, in the mid 80s here in Florida. That's nice. We'd like to get this live tonight up to 25 uh, subscribers paying attention. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, lives in the weeks, and this probably one of the most important ones we can put our hands on here today. We're going to talk a lot about, about how new gun owners or gun owners, honest gun owners, uh, stay, help you stay out of jail. There's a lot of things people do with firearms that. Uh, could get you in trouble pretty quickly. And there's 10 items there we're going to talk about. But before we do all that, we got to hear words from our sponsor. And here is the Aura the video. A little snippet of it real quick to get you guys understanding. Aura is an online protection program that saves you from online hackers and frauds. So we'll be right back after these words from Aura. As a firearms instructor, and if you're like me, you're getting sick of the spam emails and everything else like that, well, Aura is a company that will protect you from scams, frauds, and online threats. Did you know that one out of four will fall victim to some kind of online crime? Did you know that America lost over $10.3 billion on online crime? Aurora is a company that has an all-in-one protection plan for you. It'll keep your family safe from hackers, fraudsters, and online predators. Each plan comes with a million-dollar identity theft insurance. With a single couple or family plan, they have one that'll fit your needs. Take advantage of the family plan because it'll protect up to five adults and it includes children. Uh, if you'd like to, Aura gave it us a special deal that we're allowing you to take a 14-day free trial by clicking the link above. Protect yourself with Aura. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, you know the rules here. If you're new to the, if you're new to the uh, live, uh, you can actually physically. Uh, Go ahead and uh, tell us where you're from uh, in the comments below. If you are one of our loyal subscribers, you can always comment below as well. We're going to go through a lot of different stuff here today. But 10 ways an honest gun owner lands in jail. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can get yourself in trouble with it. And I want you to make sure you're not making any of these mistakes. As we get our concealed carry in the state of Florida, we feel like we have the ability or the right to carry but there are some places you're not allowed to carry and there are some things you're not allowed to do with a firearm we're going to cover a bunch of these today uh we if you could for me make sure you make some comments and let us know where you're from and can someone give me a comment let me know you can hear me pretty well um that would help tremendously obviously if you can't hear me have people be talking about it already but hopefully uh, you can hear me uh, loud and clear there are five of you on right now, and we're going to start this right away because this is going to take us probably somewhere around 40 minutes or so, 40, 44, 45 minutes. I'm going to give us some time to ask some questions and answer some questions. Uh, speaking of that, we just did a video today that we just released from one of our subscribers. They were right-handed and left-eye dominant. And we were able to, he asked about, can you give me a stance that I can be more proficient? And I went ahead and explained to him, you know, it's really not about your stance. It's more about where uh, the weapon is over the dominant eye. And I kind of went through a video with him. So if you're right-handed and left-eye dominant, this would be a great video for you to look at, consume, and then maybe share with a friend or a family member. And once you've done that, then you've done your job. So that's awesome. And we appreciate that. So eight, we're up to eight people watching. Beautiful. We're trying to get to 20 tonight. So if you can get stay up there, get a friend or a family member, grab another laptop, grab another video, 
tell a friend or a family member and get these people up here. We have a few comments. Let's see what we got here. I bet one of them is going to be Natasha and his mom. Okay, John, welcome, buddy. John, um, boy, that's a, yeah, let me just, I'll show the name. It's going to be, and I'm not going to try to say that name, uh, but uh, that last name, but it ends in ski. Er, uh, I'm not even going to try it. All right. Uh, Miss Johnson's on the on the on the line. Thank you, Miss Baby. I love you, Jim. Welcome back, bud. Chris, loud and clear. Thank you, thank you guys very much for that information. We appreciate that very very much. And uh, you know, if you have an opportunity, guys, check out that aura. Aura is going to give you that protection you need. A single family plan, a single person plan starts at like nine or ten dollars, guys. The family plan will cover up to five adults is in the $30 to $50 range, which will give you up to 50 um, items like laptops and, and iPhones that they'll protect as far as your social security number and everything else like that. Uh, pretty economical. It gives you what I did when I got on that aura. I realized I was paying Experian $19 a month. I was paying another company to look at my uh, business information. I was getting another company that I was paying to um, monitor my um, credit cards. So now we went, I took all those away and went to one thing. Now, keep in mind, they gave me a free program for six months, but I went ahead and gave them my credit card for it to keep going because I'm pretty impressed what they've done to me so far. I've got six or seven places where my name was on a um, identity broker. Basically, they sell your information. I told you this a couple weeks ago, and they're getting me off all those lists. So I'm not getting those spam calls like I used to get. And that's, it, 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 you know, I don't know how many spam calls you get a day, but I get a ton of them, you know. And I'm just hoping that if they take about 50% of them away, it's going to be worth the money I'm paying. So, and plus with that million dollar protection, how do I lose? If I lose my identity, they theft and everything, they, they're backing me with an insurance policy, which is pretty awesome. So in the description of this video, in the description of this uh, live podcast, uh, we're going to put a link in there as well. We're up to nine, nine people watching. Um, we're going to put that in there as well. And you can click on that link to get the 14-day free trial. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I am going to put that up to a live area there. Get this. Boom. And see if I can get it to a point where... I'm going to go big. There we go. Big, big, big. There we go. I'm going to go back to the first screen. So somehow or another I touched everything and made it. There we go. Ten ways an honest gun owner lands in jail. You would think, uh, let me get that off there, Miss Johnson. I don't know why she's, why I pushed that up there. Let me get that banner off there and pull her information. Beautiful. There we go. Well, I'm getting good at this. I'm telling you, you, give me another 25 years, I'll have this thing all figured out. All right. <clears throat> Ten ways an honest gun owner lands in jail. Now, now if you could think of any other ways uh, on this, you can actually add to your comments as well. We'll look at those comments after we get done here. But uh, there are plenty of ways that you would think or not think that you can legally get yourself in trouble with the firearm. And uh, we're going to cover some of those today. So let's start out with the first thing here. There's Aura. We're not going to get ourselves too much into that, but there is the information on there if you'd like to see that. And then, yeah, here we go. Did you know that even an honest gun owner can unknowingly break the law and end up in jail? Here are 10 ways it can happen. Now, I wanted to show you guys and I want to remind you about Delta Defense. If you have your phone with you right now and you click that little um, cue card down below there, Delta Defense is going to give you a free gift. And it is a concealed carry uh, booklet. 
and it talks about how to defend yourself and why Delta defense is very important, how they have your back. And this lines right up with carrying a weapon. When you're carrying a weapon for your defensive purposes, you need to make sure that you're protected in many ways, but you need to protect yourself financially and legally, and that's where Delta Defense comes in. So if you have an opportunity to do, use your phone to hit that bar, that barcode, I would highly recommend you do so. Now, there'll be a description in the link below for the Delta Defense. What they offer more than anything else is that bond that gives you up to a million dollars of bond money. They give you 24-7 access. It's good in all 50 states. It covers uh, legally, uh, criminally, and civilly. Uh, there's a lot of positives to this company. Uh, as anything, uh, you need to make sure you understand every law, every regulation as you travel. The cool thing about the Delta Defense Program is they have the app. The app on the phone gives you all the laws and regulations of the states. And they actually physically have a full staff that updates the laws and regulations on the app 24 hours a day. So at the end of this, you have the most updated information at your fingertips for a small amount of money a month, and it's well worth it. You never think you're going to need it until you do, and you don't want the public vendor or the prosecutor that are not enemies, right? The public defender and the prosecutor are buddies, you understand. And the public defender and the prosecutor work off deals and this and that. And you do not want the public defender to give you away because he made some special deal for a crackhead. So make sure that you understand the laws and regulations the best of your ability. And Delta Defense will offer you that information. And with that cell phone app, you've got everything you need to feel protected as you travel. And the majority of people get in trouble three ways. In their home in their car, in their hotel room while others are traveling. And you need to make sure that you have all the rules and regulations. The cool thing about the app on the phone is you can do a trip tick. You can go from here to New Jersey. Well, New Jersey, you wouldn't want to go to New Jersey. But from here to South Dakota, and it's going to give you every law, every regulation, where the gun needs to be. What, does it have to be loaded? Does it have to be a three-step rule? What does it have to do? You know, uh, you need to make sure you understand all these laws as you travel because the cops, we live in Florida. Our cops here are transient. They're not from Florida. Most of them aren't. I'm born and raised in Lee County, but that doesn't mean the cops born and raised in Lee County. That cop stopping you today, two weeks to a month ago, could have been living in New Jersey and where the handgun laws are a lot different than they are in Florida. So make sure you understand the laws and regulations the best of your ability. Don't assume you understand the laws because in Florida, not everywhere, but in Florida, everything with a firearm is either first, second, or third degree felonies. And you need to make sure you understand that the best of your ability. All right, so let's keep going. All right, number one, failing to properly secure a firearm in your home. Now, on books on any state, there are laws about having a firearm and child. You must always lock up a firearm for a child can get to it. And there are plenty of children that get uh, hurt or a sister or a brother gets hurt because a firearm was left unattended or not secure. And this is one of those things. If they were to prosecute you, there's a couple ways they could do it. One is you, well, if your child got the firearm and physically hurt himself, you legally broke the law here in Florida. What punishment could they really do to you at that point in time? 11 people watching at this point, 11 people. But at the end of it, you did break the law. The worst part about it is if you leave the gun unattended, and somebody who's not supposed to have a firearm gets a hold of it and hurts individuals with it, not only could you criminally be charged, but you could be civilly charged as well. So number one is failing to properly secure a firearm in your home. There are many ways to secure a firearm. I'm showing you this locking system that's here. This is a four-button push unit. 
you close it, you push it in a pneumatic order, and it'll pop right open. These are great and wonderful, but in a high defense situation, you kind of want the gun to be available for you now, not. But there are locks, there are child locks you can put on the weapon. Most of those child locks go through the receiver, which I wouldn't recommend leaving that on if you're using the gun in a high defense situation. You got to unlock that as well. Um, but the number one thing, a lot of people in Florida end up losing a firearm because they left it in the car. And if you're not paying attention, you could be three days, two weeks, a month, and then realize, where's that firearm? I had it somewhere. I don't know where it is. And then all of a sudden, you don't have an idea. And there becomes an issue for you. Now you've left the gun unattended. Someone's got it. And they may have be doing something uh, bad with it, you know. And then criminally, bad guys don't care where they get the firearm from. But physically, if that gun is fired on a crime scene and you bought that weapon through a gun store, that's where they're going to come first is the last place that weapon was tied to. There is no gun registration in Florida, but the serial numbers attached to you from the background check that happened at the gun store. So the circle really is the manufacturer. Let's say it was a Glock 19. The Glock 19, the first thing that the manufacturer would be contacted, Glock would be contacted, and find out where did serial number ABC123 go. And then that would, we don't buy from Glock. We buy from a distributor that buys from Glock, the separation from the gun store and the gun manufacturer. So then they would contact the gun store, the gun manufacturer, would then contact the dealer. The cop then would contact, contact the dealer, find out where that serial number went, and then they would contact the gun store, which is called a trace. And then that trace itself, it comes to who I sold it to. I do my paperwork and I tell them, and then they come out and request to know where you had or what, what happened or did you ever have or did you sell it or whatever the deal was? And that becomes a whole little wheel there. So technically, uh, you know, properly not securing the firearm could cause you a lot of financial burden as much as it could physical burden if you were to do it and leave it unattended and someone got to it and hurt themselves. Very unlikely you charged on that on a regular basis, but there are there are laws on the books about it so be very careful and then we're talking i'm talking florida guys because that's what i know i know other states out there uh that are very 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 strict about uh securing firearms in the car and the home and things like that so make sure you understand because this video goes out throughout the united states and the world which is uh, it seems i'm humbled each week when i see how many people from other places european wise uh that are watching these videos um uh, i i get the whole thing uh about them wanting to learn about firearms and we actually every week uh or once probably three times a month we'll get somebody from germany or we'll get some from sweden or we'll get some people from canada that want to come over here and shoot and the, one of the things they do is we are their Disney World when it gets in the Cape Coral because they get to come over and have some fun. They get to shoot a pistol. They get to shoot a shotgun. They get to shoot an AR-15, which they don't get to do in their own states, um, in their own countries. So it's kind of a fun thing. So number one, failing to pr properly secure a firearm in your home. All right. Number two is carrying a concealed weapon without a permit. Now in Florida, we don't need a permit to carry anymore, but I highly recommend you always get your concealed carry. What physically happens, but there's a lot of states that have constitutional carry. Florida doesn't have constitutional carry. We have called permitless carry. Uh, but one of the things about Florida is every firearm must be concealed. And we need to be very careful of having a weapon uh, seen without it being concealed, especially if you have a concealed weapons license in Florida, the weapon cannot be out in the open unless you're using it. 
In other words, if you were to bend over and tie your shoe or reach it up and get in a can of beans, those are uh, uh, unattentionable, uh, unattentionable uh, actions you're doing, and you most likely wouldn't be uh, charged for anything else like that. Uh, but physically, a firearm uh, out in the open like that, and let's say the cop stops you and uh, he's stopping you for speeding and he looks inside the car and you've got the firearm between the seats, but he can see the top of it. You're breaking the law at that point in time in Florida because a weapon is not concealed. Concealed in Florida means hidden out of ordinary sight. So carrying a concealed weapon without a permit, uh, this happens a lot to people because what they end up doing is once that gun shows, the weapon is no longer concealed. Now, Florida allows you to get your concealed, and we always recommend you get your concealed. Because the concealed carry gives you 36 states you can carry concealed if you're a Florida resident. If you're a non-resident, you get 36 states to carry concealed in. So having the permit and the education is important than not having it. Now, when the governor signed over the bill uh, that allowed the permitless carry in Florida, he did that on the on the information that people wanted it. And I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not sure if every cop in Florida is really happy about everybody in Florida. If you make it to Florida, guys, right now, if you make it to Florida and you're legally allowed to have a gun, when you get to the state lines of Florida and you've got your gun here, you can actually carry it in Florida, which is, oh, I'm going to put my photo hat on here, but it makes the cops very uncomfortable, I, I would think. That could be back before your car was an extension of your home. And if we had a vehicle, we could have a gun in it because our car was an extension of our home, an extension of our docile, and we were allowed to protect ourselves in it. With this new law that Florida has, uh, if you make it to Florida, no matter what state you're from and you have a firearm on you, you can carry it concealed at that point in time without having a Florida concealed carry license. The challenge with that is not knowing every Florida law. In a lot of places, a lot of, a lot of towns, a lot of cities, a lot of states don't make firearm laws um, misdemeanors. They make them felonies. So, and what you can't say is the ignorance of the law. You can't say, why do you know that law? Because at that point in time, that's your own fault for not knowing that law. You're responsible for your actions, not some, not some I, I should have known that or I, or I didn't know that. You know, when you get your concealed carry in the state of Florida, you take a class. The class gives you all the laws and regulations. If you take a class with us, we're allowing you to shoot a little bit. But most classes are done in retail establishments, Bass Pro Shop, things like that, that they have the class and they take you over in a corner and you shoot out of a, a capture box and you shoot two or three rounds. I did that for many years, guys. I worked at a gun store. We didn't have a range. But we had a capture box. We shot a steel bullet, a lead bullet through a revolver. And that was their shot requirement. Now, as a firearms instructor, we sold a lot of extra classes to teach people to shoot. But physically, you didn't have to learn to shoot a gun. You didn't have to know anything like that. So physically in Florida, the concealed carry weapons license is an important thing for you because it gives you all the laws and regulations. But Carrying concealed without a permit legally in Florida is not a problem, but you may be in other states where it could be a problem for you. So that's why I put it on the list as number two, carrying in the wrong place or even hiding the gun in the wrong place or the wrong area. We had a thing here in Florida called securely encased. And securely encased was glove box, center console, snap holster, zip gun bag, or any other container which a weapon had to be of the lid had to be removed before the fire could be drawn and shot. That's what we used to be able to do without a permit, without a license. You could have the gun securely encased and have it in your car, but you couldn't get out of your car with the gun. With the new law, you're allowed to get out of the car with a gun and walk around with it, but the gun must be concealed. Concealed means on or about your body, hidden out of ordinary sight. Number two, let's go to number three. Number three is selling a gun to someone who is not legally allowed to own it, own it. Now, how are you going to be able to tell this? Now, the only way I could tell anybody, and this is what I tell everybody in Florida here, that when you want to sell a firearm. We have a lot of times people come here 
their husband died, their wife has all these firearms, and we don't want to buy everything from them. So we kind of give them the rules, what she, she can't do. Legally in Florida, there's three things you can't do. You cannot sell a gun to somebody who's underage, obviously. Uh, 18 is uh, ability to uh, possess a firearm, but you cannot own a firearm, which is a weird possession law thing here. And years ago, 18 and up, you could buy a rifle. 21 and up, it, you could only buy you could buy a rifle or handgun. Well, technically, you know, when Governor Scott changed the laws, he made 21 for everybody. So number number uh, number three, selling a gun to someone who's not legally allowed. Well, if you're not from Florida, if you sell somebody a firearm that's not a Florida resident, there becomes another challenge for you. Right, someone who's not underage, someone doesn't live in Florida, you can't sell a firearm to someone you legally know can't own a firearm. Now that's not very easy for us as individuals trying to sell something private to somebody else. Now legally, you can sell something private to somebody else as long as you're getting some information about the person you're selling it to. So there is a PDF form called a gun purchase form. It's a PDF. And basically what it does, it takes the gun, it takes the serial number, it takes the person you're selling it to, it gets his address, his name, and any kind of documentation. Maybe he has a concealed carry or something like that. And at that point in time, you fill this bill of sell out and you keep it. So when the cops come to your house after he loses it or sells it to somebody else, that you have an option of where the weapon went. And you don't legally have to do this in Florida because we are what we are, but you know you want to see why A, you know what that means, uh, when, especially when you're selling firearms. That's why I always recommend if you're going to sell a firearm, hit the local gun stores, find the best one that's going to give you the best price. Understand that a gun store is not a nonprofit organization. And understand that most new firearms, we make the average of $55. So the only guns that we really make any hammer money on is the used weapons. So at that point in time, on the average, guys, I make $100 on a used gun. And I'm still giving you a good deal on it when I sell it back compared to a pawn shop who's given very little money to the person and trying to make as much profit as possible. And I'm not cutting on the pawn shops. I'm just saying, if you're going to sell a firearm, make sure you get that bill of sale because legally that firearm is not taken out of your name. You just sold it to somebody. That serial number would be attached to you no matter who owns it. So they're going to come walking back to your house when that gun, if that gun, or it does be found on a crime scene you're going to follow that big chain back around you know the dealer dealer to the gun store gun store back to you and they're going to ask you what happened to the firearm and if you have your bill of sale well you're pretty clean at that point in time but if you don't have your bill of sale then you could be pushed into a position now most likely in florida there's not really an issue on that but there are other states out there that aren't as gun friendly as Florida. Remember, Florida is the gunshine state, and we are pretty gun friendly when it comes to it. Uh, yeah, but uh, you're not legally required to do anything, but you should do as much as you can. Because, you know, a lawsuit criminally uh, is unlikely in certain situations, but civil lawsuits can happen continuously. And they take years and years and years to push through. And all the attorney's looking for is money. And if you have assets and you have assets you need to protect, make sure you do everything you can to protect yourself and your loved ones. That's why we carry a pistol to begin with, if you think about it. I mean, we're carrying all these weapons. We're doing all this training. We're getting all these, uh, you know, the order to protect your social security number. And we're getting the... the the, the Delta defense protects you uh, criminally and civilly if you have to use a gun in line defense. You know, you just want to have your protection. 
and doing something stupid by selling a gun to somebody you know is not qualified to own a gun. You know, there's a reason why someone wants to pay twice as much the gun's worth. That's a big tell, guys. If you know the firearm's worth $500 and someone wants to give you $800 for it, walk away. Walk away. Because that's probably a guy who can't qualify for a gun. And then you're putting yourself in a bad position. All right. Number three, selling a gun to someone who is not legally allowed to own. Using a firearm in self-defense without meeting legal requirements. Now, this happens to a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen. You think you've made a self-defense uh, decision that's right for you. You're in a critical defense situation. Unfortunately, a lot of things go through your mind in a situation like that. and You don't always know if it's clean. You don't always know if it's going to be good. Until you know what happens, and this is kind of a uh, the person who makes the decision is not the deputy sheriff or the police or the higher patrolman that's walking up to you and asking you to tell me what happened, it's the prosecutor, and the prosecutor uses what he considers a reasonable man, he takes a reasonable man decision. Would a reasonable man have done exactly what you have done? And if it meets his requirements, then he makes it a clean shoot. But if there's a question about what the reasonable man would do, then we run into a problem. So just because you can carry a weapon and you've got yourself in a situation, your best situation, the reason why I carry, is for three reasons. That's Heidi, Jacob, Johnny. I'm going to say Hillary now because that's Johnny's better half. They're not married yet, but she is the, I, I hope she's the one. Let's just say that. I care for three reasons. My family. I care for three other reasons. Evade, escape, or engaged. I don't engage if I don't have to. I walk away first. You know, I always joke, kid, if you see me running, you should have been running 10 minutes ago because the fat boy don't run. But the idea of this more than anything else is just because you think you could, I don't think you should, right? The firearm is your last option. The best self-defense legal, legal problems you're going to have is the one that you walk away from. You don't have to do it don't do it now obviously guys if if you know florida has a lot different laws than other states there are states in the united states if a bad guy comes in your front door you have to go out your back door you can't defend or protect yourself now that seems silly to me florida has castle doctrine here a lot of states do but it only means you can protect your home not your patio not your front porch not your garage so don't make any of these crazy decisions that someone's breaking into your car and you step outside with a firearm the moment you step outside with a firearm in a non-life threatening situation like someone stealing your car that makes you the aggressor you can't protect property you can only protect life so i'm going to give you an acronym ready in defense of life idle remember idle always remember idle idle in defense of life is this life threatening am am i am i worried about going dying if i make a decision that's going to affect my family my loved ones my income my security my freedom is it going to be worth it and there's what we need to get our head around. Just because you can carry doesn't mean you can make every decision possible. The concealed carry license is offered by the state of Florida. They're going to give you a concealed carry. They're not giving you permission to use it. You need to make sure you understand the laws and regulations the best to your ability. So number four, using a firearm in a self-defense 
without meeting legal requirements. That's a big one. Here's another one. Transporting a firearm improperly across state lines. And I put this one in here because it's one of my pet peeves. People always put the gun in the glove box. Now, number one, remember the glove box is way the hell over there. What's in the glove box? This <laughs> Look at all this stuff in the glove box. But I thought it was pretty cool because this, this is a can video. This is a can picture, right? I did, this is my This is my glove box. But if you look right next to the gun, what is that right there? That's a bottle of something. Now, I'm sure it's aspirin, right? But we always talk about storing a gun in the glove box. The first thing you have to do when you get stopped by a cop is what? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Put the joint down, right? No, 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 no. no. Put the alcohol down. No, no, no. You got to be stopped by the cop. He's going to want to see your license and registration. Now, how are you going to go in your glove box and get your license and registration when it looks like this? Immediately, you get stopped by a cop. You could not go in this glove box. You would not want to open this glove box with the cop standing next to you without telling them that there's a gun in the glove box. The moment you tell the cop there's a gun in the glove box in Florida here, they're going to get it for you. Now, the problem with that is when you give the permission to get that glove, get that gun open, get that glove box open and get the documentation, look at that bottle of pills there, right? Well, here's what I always tell people in class. Imagine if you allowed the cop to open the glove box and that bottle there is from your neighbor who lives across the street and her car broke down and you decided to help her out by taking her to Walmart to get her car fixed. In the meanwhile, they have to keep it overnight. She drove her home. While she was in your car, she went to the medication place there and got medicine. And, of course, uh, she has a prescription for Oxycontins. And she left her empty pill bottle in your car. And you decided, hey, you know what? I'm not going to physically throw that away in case she needs it. And you threw that in there. Well, her last name and your last name's not the same. You just put yourself in a bad position there. So keep the gun out of the glove box right off the bat when transportation. Now, you need to know the laws and regulations for each state. You know, I've been told by many, many people that Florida has a two-step rule. It doesn't have a two-step rule. But there are places in town or the three-step rule. Your weapon in Florida is allowed to be in the glove box, the center console, the snap holster, the zip gun bag, or any other container that your weapon needs to be in, as long as you can open the box. The gun can be loaded. No issue there. But that's not every state. There's a lot of states that have a three-step rule. A lot of people said Florida had three-step rule for many, many years. We don't have that either. Three-step rule will be gun one place magazine another, and you have to rack the slide before you can use it. Now, these weapons can be loaded in Florida, but you see where I say the glove box should be off limits to begin with. Number two, you can't get your arms aren't long enough to get to the glove box. You can't ask the bad guy to wait a minute while I get my firearm. Each law is a little different. That's where uh, United States Concealed Carry Association has their their app on their phone will tell you what each state has for storage abilities, which will make a big difference for you. You know, Florida, the glove box is available for us, but we know that's a bad place because what we have to do. But as you carry a gun through each state, you, if you're making a trip, the most important thing after figuring out where you're going and your physical uh, transportation and how you're going to do it, what hotels you're staying at, you need to physically make a on where you plan to stop, what you plan to do, and where you plan to put the firearm. Now, you know, driving in a car and carrying on your body becomes a little challenging. I never carry my firearm in my holster while I'm traveling. I put it next to me, and, in, and normally in my cup holder, and I put a towel over top, but it makes it concealed, and that makes it, makes it legal. Now, in some states, that's not legal. But for me, as long as the weapon cannot be identified as a firearm and it cannot physically be seen, then it is concealed. 
and 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 that's what we need to make sure of. Now, as we get further along in each state, you need to verify your laws and regulations in your state. And I would look at it multiple different ways. I would ask uh, if you find a good cop that can help you physically do it. But look at the look at the statues in each state. Each state will give you the the app on the United States Council of the Delta Defense. They actually dummy it down for you to understand where the gun can be in each state you're traveling in, which is important because you get stopped by a cop, especially with a car from Florida. If you look at the Florida gun. It, it, the license plate, people say that says sunshine state on it, but it says gunshine state on it. And when a Florida plate is there, they think you're a crazy ass redneck with a gun. So they immediately assume there's a firearm in that car. And some states, like Georgia, have a mandatory tell. In other words, if you have a firearm on you, you must tell the the deputy, the cop, the sheriff, before they ask you. And if you don't, you're breaking the rules. Here in Florida, we don't have that. You don't have a duty to tell. But some states, they do have mandatory tell. And you got to make sure you understand those laws. Because that little bit there could cause you to go to jail. And a, a, an innocent person that thinks he knows the laws and regulations running through Georgia the cop finds the firearm because you didn't tell him, there becomes a real problem for you. And you didn't even think you broke the law at that point in time because you had it concealed. But he came up to your door and you did not tell him. And there becomes the problem. Anytime you get stopped by a cop in the state of Florida, I highly recommend three things. Number one, roll all the windows down. Number two, if it's at night, turn your dome light on. Number three, have your hands on the steering wheel or out the door. Doesn't matter which way. Cops comes up to the door. You immediately tell him, listen, lice, sir, I'm, listen, <laughs> just want to let you know I'm licensed to carry in the state of Florida. My weapon's on my side. Just want to make sure I know how you want me to handle this. And you shut up. 99.9% .9 of the time, the cops are just going to say the one thing. Okay, go ahead and get your paperwork. Unless your paperwork's in this glove box here. You know, the, the paperwork should be in your center console or in your visor or some way you could get to it without bothering the cop. The moment he has to help you get any documentation that he needs, you put yourself in a bad position, you put him in a bad position. All right. Easiest way to find the uh, laws in each state is through the Internet. But most of the time, the Internet is not updated to regular as you could. I, I'm, I'm one more time with the Delta Defense app. The Delta Defense app's worth its weight in gold. Do the fact that it has an updated company that updates all the laws, all the regulations in every state as you travel. And it will tell you where the firearm needs to be as you travel. Matter of fact, if you do a trip tick on that, on that app, it's going to tell you before you get to the state line, which is pretty awesome. Possessing a gun while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. This is a big one. There are some states that allow you to drink in a bar and carry a gun. Florida is not one of them. You cannot consume alcohol or drugs and use a firearm. Because if you use your firearm in a line of defense in the state of Florida, you can and will be blood tested. And if they find alcohol or any other drug in your system, you're going to lose your defensive rights. We all know that alcohol and firearms do not mix, and you need to make sure you keep that in your head. And this includes any restaurants and that are bars. There's a couple places you can't sit in a restaurant. That's at the bar, like Outback or Chili's, right? Having two drinks and driving and get caught for DUI and you have a firearm on you, you're putting yourself in a bad position, right? So you want to be very careful with that. And this includes, I'm going to make some people mad here, but this includes in your home. If you are the only one home or you're the one that's protecting your home, should you be totally loaded? If you are totally loaded, should you be the first one grabbing the firearm? 
and there becomes because there becomes our problem. Because the same thing will happen. That prosecutor is going to ask those twelve jurors would they have made the same decision? Now, most of those twelve jurors will be picked on your peers if you think about it. But if six of those people are non-drinkers and you were drinking. I'm not talking you were drunk at your home, but if you had six beers or, you know, you, you know, you would be under the influence. And at that point in time, uh, it puts you in a different position. I know it sucks to hear that, but, you know, at a certain point, if you're going to shoot, you're going to carry, you don't drink. If you're going to drink, you don't carry, period. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. And, and that, that's kind of suck. There are states that allow alcohol in bars. A bars and alcohol, guns in guns. Excuse me, guns in bars, but Florida is not one of them. And guns in restaurant, no issue. Sitting at the bar with a gun, even though you're not drinking, would be somewhat of a challenge. Now, good thing in Florida, there's not what called a bar cop that walks around checking everyone's concealed carry. Just got to be smart about it. So in Florida, if there's a tiki bar or a patio that you're allowed to smoke or any of these clubs like Eagles and Moose and uh, Elks Clubs, those are all bars. They're not restaurants, guys. So you, you need to be careful in those places as well. Probably just the veteran affairs. Probably broke the heart of all those guys there too because there's probably a bunch of firearms in there. But you need to make sure that you're not doing it. Those things can get you in, in big trouble. Firearm and alcohol together and get caught for DUI. It's a bad situation. It's expensive anyways for DUI. Then he add the federal charges of the firearm. You be, you you run into a real problem there at that point in time. So keep that in mind, guys. Number six was possessing a gun while under the influence of alcohol. Modifying a firearm... Uh, illegal under state and federal laws. Now, I put the AR on here because I thought it was kind of fun because in many, I don't know if, how many of you know this, but we had a an AR brace rule law that was pushed through last year. It was put down, there were states, uh, it was put down, um, they're still working on trying to put it back up. But basically, the one in the center is an AR pistol. The one on the bottom, because it has a stock on it, makes it an SBR. An SBR is a barrel under 16 inches, modified to be under 16 inches. In other words, the, the barrel has to be 16 inches. They do a lot of 14 and a half and put a bird cage on the front of it, pinned and welded, which makes it the 16. Uh, but a standard AR-15 has a 16-inch barrel. These shorter AR pistols are, and the SBRs are fun to have, but in Florida, an SBR is against the law without having your tax stamp where the AR pistol is legal. Now, you look at this AR pistol, it has that tube on the back of it, and that tube <laughs> is allowed to go on your cheek, um, but it's not physically allowed to go on your shoulder. Uh, if you do your shoulder, that's what they did with the braces. They were fighting the brace law because the brace itself is supposed to go braced on your arm. And a lot of guys were putting it on their shoulder. And what ended up happening is they banned all the stores from having these things. And then they were taking it to a point of if you owned a brace gun and it was deemed illegal. And they deemed it illegal. At a certain point, we had a free registration for an AR pistol. And then all of a sudden, it was challenging the court system. And at that point in time, the ATF lost the uh, stay. And they ended up changing it back to normal. But they never really changed it back for us as gun stores. So legally, you can have a brace gun. You can't really um, do much with it as you travel. And each state's a little different. Now, Florida, our sheriff, he's not really chasing braces and he's not chasing. But an SBR on the books in Florida without having your tax stamp is against the law. So just kind of keep that in mind. I like to slot off shotguns or doing anything that 
modifies the gun to make it illegal. These are things that can happen. A lot of times guys are doing these stupid wet traps. Now, wet trap is a suppressor that is a filter, like an oil filter. And these guys are screwing them on the end of these guns and making a can, a, a suppressor, which without the $200 tank stamp is a federal offense. And the guy who made those wet traps was thumbing its nose at the ATF many times in regards to it's just a kit and someone has to modify it at the end. And they even come with pieces of tubing and everything else like that. But the, the whole idea of it, it was a can and they were able to do it. But if you got caught with it and the guy who did the, the can kits, wet trap kits, they, when the ATF went to raid him, he had a bunch of them on his guns. And that's how they got them. The can's not illegal when you attach it to something where it's legal. So you want to be very careful of suppressors or anything else that are not not done legal. You know, illegal stuff like that can cause you real problem, real jail time. And you want to be very careful with it. Make sure you understand all the rules. Two days ago, three, last Friday, a woman came to me at the bowling alley. Her husband owned three of them. He had been passed away for four years. Now, I would assume the ATF would have gone over and confiscated those because they were on paper. He had physical paperwork for them. And at the point, I told her to take them over to one of the companies here locally in town that were uh, class three because we're not and make sure that she gets all the right documentation because she wanted to give them to somebody else, but you can't do that. She did not legally own them. Her husband owned them, but when he passed away, because they were a tax stamp product, they should have been picked up by the ATF, but they weren't. And I told her to go and find somebody who would, and she ended up doing that. So that's pretty cool. So you want to be very careful. Make sure you understand the laws and regulations. Because that young lady would have got herself in big trouble. And the person who wanted to take the suppressor, she was didn't know the laws and regulations either. So it was kind of a catch, catch, catch there. Because she had them, they thought, ah, no problem. I can use them. No, no, no. you got to make sure you understand them. Understand the rules and regulations the best. All right, number eight, not reporting a stolen firearm to authorities. This is big, man. This is big. Now, a lot of times people don't do this. Because they don't know where the firearm went. They don't have no idea when it was stolen because somebody leaves their firearm in the car. And that's the, that, that right there. If you watch 25 reports, majority of the time, when they're stealing firearms, they're stealing from an unlocked car with a firearm loaded that's in it. You know? And these, I wouldn't, you know, here we go with the civil and the criminal charges. There's not a lot of criminal charges happen in Florida, but I can tell you, you lose a firearm and some kid takes it to a school or does something stupid with it, or a madman gets a hold of it and has a mass, mass, uh, uh, problem there. Uh, and it all, circles back to you everybody that's gone through all these these problems we've had in the years on these shootings they finally figure out where all these firearms are coming from where they're going and what they're doing and they do go back and look at these people and if it looks like it's a a a, a, a weapon that's attached to you uh you, you've got to be careful so you always want to report stolen firearms the moment you realize they're stolen Lost or stolen guns are more likely to be used in crime. That's a fact. Reporting means police are looking for missing guns right away. That's the beauty of that, guys. That serial number cannot be burned off. If you take it to a gun store and they burned off the serial number, we know immediately that's probably a hot gun. Police can track down missing guns before crimes happen. This is important too, guys. And police can locate and arrest gun trafficking. Trafficking with firearms is a big deal, man. 
These people are buying these guns, stealing these guns. That's why I always tell people a firearm must be concealed because the moment we open carry, maybe you know, how many people scream, I want to open carry. Why do you want to open carry? Open carry makes you the first victim. Think about that. A firearm does not steal, that does not scare a bad guy. When a bot when a bad guy sees a firearm, all they're looking at is a monetary amount of money. That $500 Glock on your side that's out in the open, that you've lost your tactical advantage. When the bad guy sees it, which will never seem coming until it's too late, at that point in time, you became the first victim. That makes sense? So you got to make sure you understand when these firearms are out in the open like that, they are not. They're not scaring a bad guy away. They keep The bad guy's just seeing it and making yourself the first victim. So not reporting a stolen firearm to authorities is probably one of those things. I wouldn't say you would go to jail for it, but you'd get a lot of hard hardships on it. And, and think about mostly, man. I mean, there's people that have lost lives because of stolen guns. And if you're involved in that, in one way or another, you got to live with that the rest of your life. Should you leave your firearm in the car? No. Should you leave your car unlocked at night? No. You know, you know this. I don't tell you this stuff. But how many firearms? It, you know, it's always the same thing. This is what's said, right? I always lock my car. I only unlocked it one time, and that one time is when they broke in and stole it. So never leave the gun unattended. That's the key. This whole point about this, you are responsible for that firearm and those bullets and what they do. Whether you're pulling the trigger or someone else is pulling the trigger. Go to the next one. Brandishing a weapon in a threatening manner. Now I use this picture again, but you can imagine I've been I've been there. I've I've seen it happen. I've seen a guy and two guys in a Walmart parking lot having a confrontation, and the one guy trying to back the other guy down lifted his shirt up and showed the firearm. Now was that in rage and anger? No, but they were they using anger and rage. Yes. So here's what I'll tell you. This is very important. If you're using your firearm in rage and anger, you've already lost. You never should pick your firearm in rage and anger, only in fear. Fear of what? Death or bodily harm. If you're pulling your firearm and you're showing it to somebody to scare them away, but I told you already, if you're pulling it to, 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 do a warning shot, uh, you know, you're responsible for that bullet too, right? Never forget, in Cape Coral, discharging a firearm in the city limits is against the law, even if you're trying to protect yourself. They don't always charge people for that. But legally, shooting a firearm, because remember, when a bullet goes out, it's got to come down. So you never shoot a firearm up for a for warning shot. Uh, you always shoot it down if you have to, but don't do warning shots. Warning shots are one of those things. Because what's going to happen is the judge is going to ask you if he's that much of a threat, why don't you shoot him? Especially if that bullet goes in someone else's house or someone else has hurt somebody else. Criminally, morally, and civilly responsible for every bullet that comes out of that gun. Make sure you keep that in your brain. Florida allows you to carry a weapon without a permit or with a permit. With a permit, you're allowed to carry in 36 states. Remember, you're responsible for those bullets and what those bullets do. If you walk around town thinking that way, chances of you and you actually getting in the situation where you need it. I carry every day. Jacob, my son, carries every day. I know many people that carry every day. We're not carrying because we want to shoot somebody. We're carrying because a cop's too heavy to carry. It's not the cop's job to save your life. It's your job to save your life. You got to make sure you understand morally, civilly, and criminally responsible, but you got to make sure you are the protector. You are the, your first line of defense. Cops' job, really? Draw the chalk line and write the report. Make sure the report's not about you. 
All right. Number nine was brandishing a weapon in a threatening manner. <coughs> okay, this is not Florida, uh, but obviously if you had a short barrel rifle or a suppressor or something like that, but there are plenty of place people moving from one state to another and failing to properly register a firearm in the state. Now, Florida does not have registration. We don't register guns here. Only registration Florida has is if you're buying a short barrel rifle or if you're buying a suppressor of any kind or any kind of class three option, those are registered in the state of Florida. The rest of them are just background checks. But, you know, you could be in a state where you received a firearm from a, uh, a person. Trust me, there are plenty places in, in the United States that have gun registration and some old guns that were grandfathered in that people think they can get away with owning them until something goes down. If you're using a gun in the line of defense that in that's supposed to be registered and you're using a registered gun in that, you already started yourself in a problem. So make sure you understand the laws and regulations of your state. And if you need proper registration of a firearm, make sure you're doing it now it's a bad word in florida it's a bad word all over the you know, you know the places that do not have gun registration because gun registration is one of those deals um that you know it's very political right now uh, but at the end of it, it the registration basically says that this is the gun this is who owns it this is the serial number of it and this is where it should be and that's kind of one of those deals because I don't know if you know much, but they've passed these red flag laws all over the United States. Florida has a red flag laws as worse. And if you don't know much about the red flag laws, red flag law says if you or someone you know deems you unsafe with a firearm or feels unsafe around you with a firearm, that red flag law allows them to confiscate your weapons until they deem you safe and this is a challenge in a lot of states because of a government aid entity making that decision for you by a person that you may know or may not know and they're not physically allowed or can keep their identity secret through these red laws Red law, red flag laws. So it's kind of a spooky little deal when you think about that. But in the term of things, even though Florida doesn't have a gun registration, your serial number of your weapon is on paperwork in a store, in a piece of paper, in a filing cabinet. And once the guns, like safe, safe for instance, our gun store closed down, those papers go to the government as well. We're not allowed to throw them away or discharge them in any way. They are property of the ATF, and they can have that. But as far as who owns it, what owns it, what serial number it is, Florida doesn't have that registration. But failing to not properly register a firearm would get you in big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. All right. Remember, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Stay informed. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Guys, I love you very much. I, I am always um, humbled each week when we get this many people that I come to this little channel of mine. Something I had a dream of many years ago to open this facility and begin a firearms instructor and be able to um, uh, do what I love. I love impacting the, I love, I've loved impacting students. I love taking a new student and become a, a better student, more proficient and everything else like that. That's one of those things that it, it, it's just so awesome to me. And when I was able to get this YouTube channel going and then, you know, we're, we're at 30,000 subscribers. We're, we're 29, 29,000 subscribers. Uh, you know, each week we're doing the helpful videos. We're getting people to tell us that. And it, it becomes so cool. It's so awesome for us. So, 
you know, keep in mind, guys, you know what you can do and you can't do. And, you know, I wanted to kind of throw this out to you because too many people think because they have their concealed carry, they can. And you just got to get your head around and make sure you understand because the cops stopping you today, two weeks to a month ago, could have been living in another state where the gun laws aren't the same. And that's good for Florida because Florida is a transient state. So every cop here is from somewhere else. And they have the gun laws of the somewhere else and Florida's laws all attached in their head at the same time. And we want to be pretty positive to understand that that they are the arresting authority. And they can make a mistake while arresting you. But at the end of it, it you know, the prosecutors are the ones that are going to really put it to you if they have to. So we want to be careful of that. We want to know the laws and regulations, the best ability. Make sure you find out the best. John Guttmacher, who is the authority of concealed carry, uh, he writes a book about Flor- the gun laws of Florida. That's probably a pretty good one. But it's not going to give you every law in every state. So let's go up, look at the comments, see who's there. We have John again. There we go. Miss Johnson, Jim from New Hampshire. There we go, Chris. Awesome. Oh, Natasha, Mom and I are tuning in. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? I hope you're feeling good. Uh, um, Suai Dumas, at, and he is from New Mexico. Uh, Rick Martinez from Dakota, 5x5. Five five. Beautiful, man. Nice, Rick. Uh, okay, John asked. Here we go. Let's look at this. This is good. This is good. What about printing in the state of Florida? Well, that's a good question, buddy. Printing, it, let, me, let me define printing for people who don't know. Printing is the outline of the gun showing through the clothes. In Florida, now not every state has this. Now you want to be careful of this. I try to do as much about Florida as I can, but I know these videos go all over the place, so I want to kind of give you but all the time. But you want to remember this, right? In Florida, printing is not against the law. But is printing smart? When someone sees a firearm, do they see a law-abiding citizen or do they see a criminal with a firearm? Firearms do not equal good guy. Firearms equal criminal to most people. So printing a firearm or showing the outline of the shirt, a firearm through the outline of the shirt, puts you in a position where you're almost open carrying. And when the bad guy sees a firearm, do they see bad guy, firearm? No, they're just seeing a monetary amount of money. So we don't want to print. We don't want an unintentional display. The unintentional display and printing are not against the law in Florida, like bending over, tying your shoe, or reaching up and getting a can of beans. Those two areas there where the gun could show, again, not the smartest thing ever. But they're not against the law. And that's kind of, uh, we want to be very careful doing it because we are held to a higher standard because we have our firearms and we have our license. And we want to make sure we don't make any mistakes like that. Great question, John. Great question. We appreciate you. I'm sorry about that last name. Um, I, I'm, I'm not even going to attempt it. Uh, it's got a couple C's, a bunch of Z's. And a ski at the end. So I appreciate you very much, though. Thank you. Good question. Hope I answered it for you. All right. And Mr. Jim, I think he said something here. Excellent information once again. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to listen to. Oh, I appreciate that. But speaking of that, guys, if you haven't had an opportunity to click our podcast, we're taking these lives taking the audio of them and putting them on one of our podcasts and our podcasts themselves can be listened to as well, wherever you consume your uh, podcast from. And we actually upload one or two little podcasts a week. And we're trying to fill uh, a nice little thing here. A lot of these are, are uh, continuations of these. Uh, Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Um, so if you have an opportunity, we'd love to see that. A large percentage of the people who are watching our programs are not subscribed. And I would ask you, if you can for me, uh, if you have not, 
make sure you hit the bell icon, the like, and subscribe button. I've heard a couple times that people do hit the subscribe button and get unsubscribed once in a while. And I'm not saying that's a furious thing they're, that, that they're doing, um, but it does happen on a regular basis. And, you know, we are in the not such a good category because of firearms and the firearm industry gets hammered a lot on, um, on the platforms mm, on a regular basis due to the fact that they think that we are all trying to sell firearms on these platforms, which we're not. We're, I'm trying to give you as much information as possible to make you more proficient and safer with a firearm. And that's kind of one of those deals. Everybody that wants to and wants to shoot or learn to shoot or become more proficient, these videos, these audios, these my whole YouTube channel, my whole company is all about that. Our avatar is you. We specialize in you. We want to take you from the over the novice to the to the best shooter you can be. Because keep in mind, guys, you know, in a high defense situation, you're gonna fall back to your weakest training. And that weakest training is what? When's the last time you shot a pistol? Hopefully it's hopefully it's last week. And hopefully you do it on a regular basis. And how proficient are you with the pistol? And those are all those positive things we got to get our head around because a firearm is nothing but a tool and it needs a craftsman. Become the craftsman. Become better at your proficiency. You know, we do videos all the time about grip and stance and trigger control and sight picture and sight alignment. But what I'm here to do is help you. So if you have something or you have a problem at the range, or you're looking for the next pistol for yourself or anything else like that, that's what I'm here for, man. Hit that comment button, send me an email, give me a call. You know how many I get phone calls on a regular basis from people all over the United States calling me and telling me they appreciate my services and they appreciate everything else like that. You can always become one of our members here. You know, for two dollars and ninety-nine cents, you're supporting us on a monthly basis which in turn helps us buy equipment, new cameras, and everything. I was able to buy that new camera because of members. And, you know, that's kind of the deal. Uh, our, our, all of our videos are getting monetized now, which is a pretty awesome thing. Our, subscribe, our, our uh, sponsors themselves are, are funding some of our stuff we do nowadays. Uh, and all we're asking you to do is check them out. Check out the sponsor. We're not asking you to buy anything. They're giving you 14 days of free, free service if you love it. And, and, and you know, for me, I never want to do anything or do any of these sponsors that I didn't believe in or I didn't see it or it, it wasn't that thing. I, I mean, I get bombarded on a regular basis. Will you do a video on this? Will you do a video on that? I don't do them all. I can't do them all, but I wouldn't do them all because they're not they're not what I want to do. But, you know, when you get a video and you get a save or you get a video and this aura thing, uh, I would didn't even think about it until I talked to the salesman. <clears throat> this is something that everyone needs. And when you have a family of five program, I believe it was in the 50s. So we get five people, five family members. They don't have to live at home unlimited children this is the one thing people don't think about is your child at this point in time has a social security number when i was born i didn't have a social security number until i got to 16 and i had to get my first job that's when we got our social security number these kids nowadays have the social security number when they come out so that social security number can be stolen at any time and it can be used to build, to steal, to rob. And then at the end, when that kid turns 17 or 18 or 19 and wants to try to go to college or try to get a loan of any kind, that's when you find out that his social security number has been robbed. How about you join 
lock all those social security numbers up with those kids and it doesn't cost you anything because the kids are free if you pay for an adult and the adults themselves get a million dollars worth the live the million dollars worth their insurance uh for any kind of fraud that happens click the link in our description make sure it's something that you want don't do it if you don't want it but ideally it's cheap man i tell you what i ended up canceling like i said before just Experian, and I had another company that was doing some kind of credit card thing. And I turned three of those off, and those three alone were in the it was thirty five or forty bucks. And the single membership, um, obviously, I did the family, but the single membership, except because of the boys and my wife, uh, but the single membership was uh, uh, twelve dollars. I think it is. And the adult one, the five, the member of five was in the $30 range or something like that, which is economically inexpensive. You can find that in the couch. Or Miss Johnson says you find that in the wash. When we, well, I try to take all my money out of my pocket now, but back in the day, I didn't take anything out of my pocket. So, uh, but it, woo, it's an hour and 16 minutes. I have got to go. It's taco night. So, uh, I would like to tell you guys, thank you very much. If you have an opportunity to uh, give us a comment or anything else like that, make sure you're going to our web, our, our actual um, YouTube channel and subscribing. Make sure you check out our podcast. Until next week, guys, God bless, be safe, and remember, you are your first line defense. I love you very much. Have a great uh, weekend. Uh, this is Easter weekend, I think it is. Have a great Easter. And God bless you guys. And God bless America. And go Trump. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. All right, bye.